This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com. Back with me already. We just had a career shoot interview with Brian Clark, a.k.a. Adam Baum, Wrath, legendary WWE, WCW superstar, also All Japan pro wrestling star. He was known in WCW for two things, his chronic tag team, and his tag team with Canyon when Canyon was wrestling as Mortis with the mask on. It was just released a day or two ago, the Canyon Dark Side of the Ring. I watched it last night. You watched it. And there were some things that you wanted to say about it. So I'll let you start this off uh, with maybe when you first met Canyon and what your impressions were of him at that time. Uh, yeah. When I first met Chris, um, I had left uh, WWE in my contract. I left, I left about six months early and I went over to the UK to work dates because back then that's Vince would sort of starve you out or try to for six months or so, but I went and worked UK and then I got back to the States and I signed with uh, WCW and um, with, with Eric Bischoff. And I signed a three-year deal there, and they had decided they wanted to do like a uh, um, a Mortal Kombat type gimmick, uh, Blood Runs Cold. And so they told me um, who all would be involved in it, and um, and that I would be tagging up with Chris Canyon. Well, Chris had been Chris was a job guy prior to that. He was, um, I think the team was called Minute Work or something like that, uh, and so. Uh, he was doing jobs, and then um, I think through Dallas Page helped him uh, really get uh, noticed um, by Eric. Um, and and Chris was a hell of a talent man. He was uh, he could take some unbelievable bumps. Um, very innovative. Um, you know, um, even some of the stuff I, I look back. Um, I, I just did a tribute tape. Um, I say I, Jonathan O'Dwyer, buddy of mine over in Ireland, did it for me, my CEO. And uh, but he did a hell of a job, man. And it, he really put together some of the stuff that I had forgotten about. Some of those tag team moves, the double team stuff. Um, man, people could steal from that today, and it would it would look good. I mean, it, that's just how innovative uh, Chris was. I mean. We both pitched in and, and did parts, but De Chris was definitely the, uh, the the guy that would really be real creative with uh, new moves, innovative bumps, those type things. As a person, when you first met him, did he seem normal to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought so. He was a little... Um, I don't know, maybe high strung a little bit, um, but that just could maybe that's because this was his first real break and he was excited. It could have been that, um, but um, yeah, he was consumed. I mean, like, I mean, we're all consumed when we're in the business, especially um, you know, it's twenty four seven. It's you know, as well as anybody that the, this is the diet, the training, the the road schedule, the appearances, the everything that goes with it is it's but Chris was even more so I mean he was uh, constantly watching tape constantly and those are the things that you have to do I mean I did it too I watched a lot of tape and stuff but uh, Chris even more so than um, the average um, wrestler one thing I never really realized about Canyon when I watched him as a fan was that he was that innovative so I guess it's good from the dark side of the ring thing for for fans to know about that side of him I do think I recall hearing he helped train Carl uh, Malone for Carl Malone's WCW appearance but uh, they also discussed in this that he did have a very dark side a very unusual side where not only was he apparently hiding that he was gay, but he was also keeping like a case full of like online chats that he had with other gay men that I guess he talks to, but he would print off these chats and walk around 
with this case. We, we, call, we called it Pandora's box. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. That's what uh, Vandenberg, which is Jim Mitchell, we call him Vandy. Vandy uh, called it Pandora's box because he knew about it. Um, and later on, as time went on and, and the disagreements with those two and, and when the fighting and stuff began and when Chris would snap and actually physically um, beat up on, on Vandy, um, and so, um, that's when he, he found, he actually told me, he said that, you know, this, this guy's lost it and he's gay and he, not just, you know, he wasn't saying like he's gay to be a jerk about it, but he just said he's hiding it and that's why he's going so bananas. Um, and so, yeah, he, uh, um, Vandy did tell me later on, it wasn't right away. Um, and so, but he was still trying so much and trying so hard to hide the fact. Um, I know that it caused him, it seemed to cause him um, a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of issues. What did you think about this box that he would carry around? Was that before you knew that he was gay and what the contents was? You just figured it was travel related stuff in there? It, it was something that he had. He, he lived in a place called La Park, which was a real popular uh, condo place. And it was right behind uh, Main Event Fitness in Marietta, Georgia. And so a, a lot of the guys lived there, and he lived in that complex. Um, and that, that's where he kept it, you know, at his place. But he would have uh, – Chris would always like to have um, cookouts and stuff. And so he would always have the guys over, and we'd watch pay-per-views and – he liked to entertain, man. He enjoyed it. And, um, but yeah, I didn't really pay attention to Pandora's box until, uh, Vandy started calling it that. And then I, then, you know, I still really didn't know what was in it, but I, it didn't, didn't bother me. And I, I didn't think much about it really. At what point did, did he tell you he was gay or is that something he always kept from you? Yeah, he never he never told me. He never did tell me. Um, uh, like I said, Van, Vandy told me, uh, and so. But you know, it, it didn't affect our our working relationship and the ring relationship. Um, like I said, he was an innovator. He was um, he did he did some really good stuff. If you go back and look, some of our matches with uh, Ming and Barbarian, um, just. Everybody, man, it was always good, solid, crisp, high intensity, heavy, hard hitting bumps. And, uh, you know, um, I mentioned off air earlier that I, I think that Chris could have also uh, suffered from CTE because of just some of the bumps he did take. Uh, he took some heavy duty uh, chair shots um, in both companies. Yeah, one thing that they went into was later on when he was in WWE, which is after you had stopped wrestling in the U.S., from my understanding. Mm -hmm. They had him do something unusual, which they are known for bullying, whether they want to admit it or not, to pretend they're anti-bullying or not. There's been many documented cases of this. Look at Justin Roberts. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just... A lot of guys, Joey Styles, on and on. Yeah. They had him come out of a box, I guess, doing the Boy George song. For anyone who doesn't know Boy George, he was a homosexual singer that was kind of over the top with a look. And then The Undertaker came out and delivered some very, very stiff chair shots. And we all know how those feel. You were telling me. You took one from Animal that gave you a concussion. Uh, so all those kind of things add up. But do you think there was something off about that? They had the guy that used to work for WWE saying that they don't think there was any ill intent behind that, but there was no real rhyme or reason to do that segment. Um, I, I was trying to look at it, it two or three different ways. Like, okay, uh, I know that, Chris took a really hard shot from Raven back in WCW. And then I sort of thought, I wondered, well, did, did maybe, did, maybe did, did Chris say, Hey, really 
lay it in kind of thing, or did the taker just go way north uh, of stiff? I, I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I've, I've watched it. I've watched it like three times now and just trying to figure out um, was that, was that done? Was, did, the, did someone in the office say, Hey, do that. Cause if they did, that's, that's bullshit. I mean, that's unprofessional on every level you can think of. That's like, hey, man, let's go out here and hurt a guy so he can't provide for his family, so he can't feed his family. And you know um, that, that that's, you're supposed to take care of the guy, you know? Uh, and just looking at it, I'm thinking, man, he wasn't taking care, care of him or there, there could have been a different scenario. Was he told to do it? Why didn't he take care of him? Or did Chris say, hey, do this to me? I, see, that's where I'm sort of um, lost with it. And it's not like they had a feud going or anything or any reason why I take her would want such a brutal revenge on him. Yeah. I mean, okay, guy comes out in the box. He's wearing a dress. Well, so what? I mean, I mean, guys in the business have worn a dress or, you know, it goes back to Adrian Adonis all the way through it, I don't remember those guys getting that kind of a chair shot, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, there's something somewhere, you know, now you brought up James Mitchell telling stories that Chris would get violent yeah. with him. Uh, you didn't know his secret. So maybe he didn't take that out on you. And also you are not someone that he'd be able to bully around quite as easily. No. Um, you did mention there was something with uh, Chris Canyon and Chris Benoit, though. Uh, well, you know, um, yeah, Chris never. Chris and I hard. We really never. We got along fine. We do. I don't think we ever had a cross word. Honestly, um, we disagreed maybe on certain things on the match or, or a placement of a spot or, or some something like that. Nothing personal though. Um, I do recall one one time we would. I think I think we did a show in Knoxville. Uh, and Benoit rode back with us. So it was in the front seat. It was Mitchell, uh, Vandy, and and Canyon. And me and Benoit were in the back seat. And uh, those two started going at it, just, just bitching back and forth and back and forth. It was just driving us crazy. <laughs> I, remember, I remember Chris getting on the phone and calling one of the other boys. I don't know if it was Malenko or somebody that was a couple of cars back. And then he made he made uh, Vandy pull over, and he got out of the car and said, "I'm riding with somebody else. I can't deal with this." Um, and I even later on, after I don't know a few months or whatever, I even said, um, "I became a lone wolf, man. I I stopped riding with them. I just couldn't. Uh, the road is hard enough without that kind of stress, and." Um, so yeah, I ended up doing the whole lone wolf thing, which it was okay with me because I I did it in New York a lot too. Um, but that's just one of the many times that they got into it, uh, and it wasn't just verbal, man. It was actually physical. I mean, um, Chris would beat the shit out of him at times. That's uh, not very good, is it? No, it's not, man. It's. It's definitely a mental, some type of a mental uh, illness that that should have been addressed, or um, something that there was something that was just. I mean, I understand him trying to hide his secret and everything, um, but he just um, it, it just overwhelmed him, and to the point of where he just snapped a lot. He uh, he used to. The thing is, I um, he he was actually really funny and loved to laugh, but at the same time he could snap in a second and just be really like violent, but, but more towards Vandy Vandenberg, not really towards um, me or, or, or the other boys. It was always directed towards. Um, and here's another huge thing that I just thought about too, is that Chris had a lisp. Okay, and uh, it was really strong, and it bothered him. Um, and he um, 
that really, I think that's why he wanted to have Vandenberg around to help uh, help him with interviews and those kind of things because he had that list was so strong. And I think even when he went to New York, I think they actually made fun of it, and, which is, I mean, you know, that's third grade stuff, you know. You mentioned to me that you found it weird that other than James Vandenberg, they kind of stayed away from some of his WCW friends like yourself and Ernest Miller and some other people that really knew him well at the time. And instead they went with the young bucks and Brian cage who really only knew him just in the last few years before he passed. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they didn't uh, want to talk to more people uh, from that WCW era? I, I'm not sure. Um, that was sort of, um, if you look at, because I mean, we spent so much time together once, once I got signed on there and I knew what, um, what I was going to do with the whole blood run skull. I mean, we trained at a dojo, a shoot dojo in Atlanta, um, for six, seven months getting ready for this thing. So it wasn't like we were getting paid and doing nothing. We were working every day. If we weren't training in the ring, at the power plant going over stuff, then we would go, we would be at the dojo. So it was every day. It was something different, kickboxing, judo, takedowns, just all kind of different stuff. So we worked on it all the time. And we, like I said, we spent so much time together, had breakfast together, worked out lunch into the afternoon, evening. And then on weekends we would hang out and watch pay-per-views and sort of see what each company was doing and what, you know, where we were headed. So we spent so much time together. You would think that, hey, let's get those guys. And you know, like Ray, Ray Lloyd, Ernest Miller, um, so many guys. And you know, and and they got they got Vandy, which I, I you know I told him I talked to him today, and I said, hey man, you, you did a great job because I I think he did he really told um, the story and some of the hell he went through. As far as you finding out he was gay, was that when he basically announced he was gay uh, in wrestling? The funny one thing funny about that is I don't even remember hearing much about it, and they presented it as if it was like big news in wrestling, but I don't even remember much being said about it at the time as far as the wrestling news. Yeah, I, I mean, it was. I, I, I didn't. I never thought much about it. I mean, that's his personal life, and um, you know that that's that's his choice. I mean, you know, uh, he was my partner wrestling, uh, and we worked together. Work is work, and personal is personal. Um, but yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't remember them making. Even when I found out about it, and the way I found out was through Vandy. Um, and of course I wasn't going to say anything. I, it's, not, it's not my place. It's not my, it's not my personal business, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't remember a whole lot being, um, a, a huge deal being made about it. Now, Vandy also <laughs> talked about these parties he would throw at his house where I guess yeah. he had sand put in the backyard like it was a beach and you'd invite Club, all these girls over. Club Canyon. That's, that's what they called it. That's yeah. What, were you invited to those? Um, well, now that, that I was invited a million times, but you know, I was married and I lived up North uh, on the lake. And so, and he was more uh, downtown area, Atlanta. Um, and so, yeah, I, um, you know, I was, um, when I was off the road, I wanted to stay at home and, and relax and not be at a party. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I, I'd heard about them. And, again, now back when we were first started Blood Runs Cold, yeah, we hung out um, because it was like it was it was a party, like a pay-per-view party or something, but it was still work because we were studying the matches, making see what was going on, who was doing what, you know, the, those kind of things. So initially, yes, I used to go to when he lived behind Lex Luger and Sting's big gym there in Atlanta at the uh, Club La Park was the name of the place, um, or La Park, I think. And it was big condos behind uh, the gym. Yeah, I would go to those. As far as the clips they put up of Ric Flair and John Cena 
uh, going on Howard Stern and saying that the reason why Canyon wasn't in WWE was because he was a bad wrestler. That's the first I ever saw that. I didn't even remember. I didn't know it either. Me either. Until I watched it. And I was surprised just by the comment. Um, Chris, was, Chris was a very good wrestler. Uh, no matter what anybody says. I mean, just look at the tape. The tape doesn't lie. The guy could work. Uh, could he cut a promo with the lisp and stuff? No, that was that was hard. Uh, he did come up with a little things he could do. Um, but Chris, Chris could work, and he proved it by going up there, and I think they put a belt or two on him. Um, so uh, I, I did, didn't quite understand the whole Howard Stern angle. Do you think that would have been them just sticking up for WWE and just doing what someone from the office told them to say? Um, man, you never know. I mean, uh, Vince could have said, you know, go on there, uh, call in and bury him. Uh, I don't ever want to hear from Canyon again, that kind of thing. That's that's possible. Uh, then again, the whole uh, Boy George thing with the blasting of the, of the chair, that could have been a message. That's where I, I'm – not quite sure where that came from. Did did Taker go just off on him for some reason? Was he told to go off, or did Canyon say really lay it in? You know, I just don't know. Curing all those stories, though, I would assume the reason WWE wouldn't want anything more to do with them is because they probably knew about some of this stuff he was doing on his days off where they said he wasn't coming out of bed for for a yeah. week and erratic behavior they probably learned about it and wouldn't want someone like that under contract i would imagine it probably wasn't his wrestling ability and another thing i remember too i know that he had got a a shot a steroid shot uh and it went bad i don't know what happened i don't know if he got some bad stuff or what but he got a huge infection in his uh, his uh, shoulder, and they had to cut out cut out like a huge chunk of meat. I you know I remember that because it, it was he was really sick for a while, um, and he, I think he had also had shoulder surgery. And he, he was down in Birmingham when uh, Triple H, I think it may have tore his quad or something, and so they were down there, you know, in rehab uh, a lot together. Um, and so that may have been the time period where he had that year and a half off to come back um, and, you know, you know, I'm sure he thought to himself, hey, I'm trained hard, get ready, I'm coming back for a big angle. The big angle is you come out of a box and you get crushed. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. There's a fan on here that wants to know, do you think he had substance abuse issues? Not that I know of. No, uh, I think Chris's issue uh, is is some type of a, it was some type of a mental illness. Um, whether it was CTE, whether it was some other type of um, psycho issue, um, um, schizophrenia. I, I don't know. Um, I should ask my wife. She's director of nursing. She, she would know. Uh, I just, I, it's hard to tell, really. I, I don't know. And as far as the documentary overall, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I still, like I said, I, I think that, um, I think they missed the boat a little bit just by having uh, some of the guys that were s s so close to him and so uh, around him. I mean, really around him, not just towards the end. Uh, with, with Ray Lloyd, Ray and uh, Canyon worked a lot together. Uh, and then, you know, of course, Chris and I were, were tag partners, and uh, we worked a lot of pay-per-views, a lot of top guys, um, and had some really good matches. So um, I look back at them now and see some of the highlight clips and stuff, and I, you know, it makes me, I'm proud of them. I'm like, man, this is – we did all right, you know. So yeah, I do think that uh, Mitchell James Mitchell definitely carried the 
the show because I mean he um, just seemed the most uh, sincere. And I'm not saying the other guys weren't sincere or anything, but with, with Mitchell Vandy, man, he lived it. I mean he he actually he was actually getting beat, um, you know, and he went through a lot of hell. Uh, you know, they both did, unfortunately. Someone brings up your match against the Outsiders. Uh, what did you think about that one? Um, Wrath and Mortis versus Outsiders? Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I did. Um, you know, it was one of those things where it was sort of the end of the Blood Runs Cold um, and you know, they put the Outsiders over. But I think it was a good match. Uh, and then not too long after that, I went, went as Wrath broke off his wrath as a single. Uh, and then everybody just sort of did their own thing after a while, after it dissolved. But yeah, it was, I, that, I thought it was a good match. Yeah. Some, uh, one of the fans says it uh, was one of the best matches ever in his opinion. <laughs> I don't know about ever, <laughs> but it was, it, you know, it, it was, it was fun. Uh, you know, cause we had me and Nash working together, uh, two big guys doing a lot of good stuff, and then uh, with Chris and, and Scott doing their thing. So, yeah, it worked out. Any particular favorite match you have with him as a partner? Oh, man, I would have to say um, Fall Brawl with uh, Ming and Barbarian. Yeah, we beat the crap out of each other, and, man, they – they really beat Chris up. <laughs> I mean, Chris, I said about, about some of the bumps that Chris would take. Um, you know, he took a lot of bumps. And I took a lot of bumps, too. We, but we had some innovative stuff. If you go back and you see that, we did a suplex where Barb is getting ready to be barbarian. He's getting ready to be suplexed. And Canyon's got him up. And then I go and get up under him. And so it's like a triple-decker um, suplex. Um you know, we power bomb into a neck breaker. Just a lot of stuff that um, hadn't been been seen before. What was your reaction when you found out that he killed himself? Oh man, um, I was. I guess I, I was surprised. Yeah, um, I I knew that he had a lot of demons. Um, and demons may not even be the right word. It's just a lot of uh, mental issues. And then the, his whole struggle um, with his uh, coming out. But if you think, I mean, like today, if he came out today, he'd be a, a superstar. You know, <laughs> it's just crazy. The, it's just the, the timing, I think, was a huge part of it, too. Very interesting. I guess you probably were on the road with him when you guys were a tag team and probably broke off once you guys separated. Uh, as far as what you mean, broke off as far as, far as like uh, when you guys were wrestling together, I would imagine that you drove from town to town. But when you brought uh, when they brought you in with uh, Brian Adams, I imagine that you drove with Brian Adams. Oh, well. yeah, of course. Yeah, I was like I said, I, I did the whole lone wolf thing once uh, uh, Vandenberg and, and uh, Canyon started all the arguing and the fighting and stuff. I just started riding by myself. Uh, traveling by myself but of course when when me and brian adams got together we were i love traveling man it was the best tra traveling with brian well we're going to do another shoot interview another time i noticed there's a lot of fan questions but we're going to do a shoot interview with uh adam bomb here another time fans where it's going to be all fan questions today was just a dark side of the ring review and i appreciate uh that you did that yeah, you are sure. wearing one of your adam bomb shirts yep uh you want to let the fans know where they can get your merchandise um yeah this is a uh, this is uh some bomb gear freaking hair out of the way this is uh just one of my pieces here i just this is a line that's just starting my my majors the main stuff out right now this is just a like a, a test model here so to speak um, but what I'm doing, I'm doing a fitness line for men and women, which is bomb gear uh, for, for workout apparel. Um, but all the other wrestling stuff is like at, at PWTs. I got a huge store there. Um, and then Wrestle Merch Central in the UK. 
And then Cello Toys has my action figures. And then if there's anything else you need on eBay, it's uh, Adam Bomb Dash Chronic, K R O N I K. And I'll put the links for the fans for that in the descriptions. I I appreciate you coming on so we can get your side because for whatever reason, some of those stories were left out. Any funny positive story you could tell us about them that uh, the fans might want to hear? Um, I you know Chris was funny man, and, and he had that lisp you know, and he would uh, when he would go off or something, he'd go off on canyons like. And every everybody does their own version of the li the lisp and the canyon voice. It's like, you motherfucker! I can't believe this shit. I have to put up with all this bullshit, and now I got to put up with you, Vandenberg, you motherfucker. And it was just stuff like stuff like that, man. You just sit there and listen. Up, oh my god, they're going at it again. <laughs> it was it was nonstop, man. It really was nonstop for those two. Matt has a question about your merch. Okay. Can they get it autographed somehow? Absolutely. Yes. As a matter of fact, I even do a, a authenticity picture of me actually signing your individual, whatever you buy. I, I do that for everything, whether it be goggles, footballs, 8x10s, posters, uh, shirt. Well, shirts, I can't sign because PWT. I can't sign them if you send them. Um, but yes, yeah, I, I make sure everything is legit. You, you're not, you won't be getting um, something. It, I will prove to you that I'm actually signing it. So, yeah. Very cool. So when yeah. we're done this, I will uh, put your merch links in the description. So fans that aren't watching this live, you guys could just look at the description. And where can they follow you on social media? Oh, uh, at Real Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Clark, on Twitter. And then on Facebook. And I will soon be on Instagram. Just haven't gotten to it yet but I will be, but it's at real Brian Clark on Twitter. Very uh, good. And what are you a double XL Devin? I am a double XL. Yes. So when the bomb gear comes out, I'm sending you some and hooking you up. So I expect to at least get a visual of it. Awesome. You know what? When I get that, I'll wear it for the part two where we do the fad questions. Awesome. I'll hook you up, man. Appreciate it. And I, I have to say, I'm jealous of your hair. You still got it. Hey, still you know what? I, I keep wanting to cut it. I've cut it a few times. Um, but I, 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 I don't know who told the story. They said, as long as you can grow it and you got it, keep it. <laughs> so so I, I'm, I'm just trying to keep it while I can. Very good. Well, to close this off, I'll let you say whatever you want here to close off uh, your your review of Canyon's Dark Side of the Ring. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I watched it, like I said, a couple of times. And um, it's just sad, really, that he had to go through all that. And then, of course, uh, uh, Vandenberg had to go through the same, you know, with it. Um, there was definitely some uh, mental mental issues, mental illness, that um, if, if he could have reached out to someone or someone could reach out to him, maybe it could have saved his life. And uh, if, again, if, if you think if someone you know, because I mean, the world's changing, man, has changed a lot over just the last two years, you know. Uh, so yeah, man, um, if you see someone struggling, man, don't be afraid to reach out and uh, help someone. So. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it.